when you see panels with such lofty titles like uh, you know Europe, the European model, and so on, I always get scared that the discussion can go in all different directions, and we will not be practical enough. So, if I think of one takeaway, actually, I think the panelists were very practical and pragmatic about the not only about identifying the problems, but the different strains of where the solutions lie. And clearly, uh, you know, the, the, there were minimum three strains. One was in the in the current European infrastructure uh, within European Union. Then was like in the legal system where clearly the legislation exists but the enforcement of it is not good and then uh, last but not least is also uh, uh, driving on the positive um, uh, uh, feelings or rather passions of Europeans to see their continent as a as a unique space in which they they thrive so actually I'm, I'm quite content that we avoid uh, um, into sort of a dry uh, debate and, and sort of theoretical uh, rumblings that sometimes can happen on panels like this. It is very well that you mentioned that because I was uh, about to ask and you, for example, stated infrastructure. So do you think that events like this and discussions, discussions such as this can actually affect real life policy makers and policy decisions? I mean, I think I, it, there is a really great need of events like this, but of course to a point. And I think the uh, Belgrade Security Forum has achieved the status and the gravitas uh, that people who matter come here, and as well that people who have uh, fresh ideas uh, um, are invited to speak and, and, and share. So I think that, that that's an important thing. So it's not about having more and more events. It's about having maybe a, a limited number of events which are good. Um, having said that, um, of course, the, the purpose of these events is twofold. It's always about uh, one, on one side to hear new ideas, but also on the other side is people to start to discuss with themselves, be that in the formal part of the program or equally important, if not sometimes even more important, in the informal part of the program. And I think that's the, that's the, key, uh, that's the key issues uh, uh, about conferences like, like this. Um, speaking about the, the, the forum, uh, uh, I think that the, the, uh, it has, in five years it has established itself as a premier outlet for discussing security policy in the, uh, in, not only in former Yugoslavia, I would say in the, in, in the Balkans and is an event where people would like to come and that's important, that's actually sort of a vote of confidence uh, about the, the event itself. And uh, maybe for the last uh, question, do you have any ideas or predictions of what you would like to see for the next year's forum? You know, when, when people discuss security policies and foreign policy, often they sort of uh, um, uh, go into areas which are of geopolitical issues, strategic, and uh, these are important, and I'm not saying that they should be neglected. But I always uh, suggest to have a mix of also domestic issues, because often uh, domestic issues actually drive the, the interest and the standpoints vis-a-vis -vis the foreign policy and security policy for sure, because that, that, that is a domestic issue. I think there should be there is a need to sort of blend them more and um, the blending here happens as uh, with panels like for example the one on the inequality uh, but I would also see at some panels pot potentially inviting uh, experts from whatever economic field or, or uh, some uh, social policy politics and so on in addition to the security or foreign policy experts to so sort of mixing the the competence within the same panel so for example when we discuss on Ukraine to be specific you know I, I enjoyed the debate I think it was excellent um, but for example inviting an expert on domestic reforms in Ukraine would have brought um, a sort of a different taste uh, equally relevant to what we heard okay thank you very much